Hey, what's up? This is me, Antonio Drake. You know me? Nah, I know you don't. But you will get to know me. Like I say, I'm Antonio Drake, owner of Drake's Biscuits. I'm going to talk a little bit about biscuits. Maybe you already own biscuits, or maybe you want to get into biscuits. But if you already own them, I'm just going to give you a little more information about them. Let's talk about the easy stuff first. Let's talk about temperature. Yeah, as we know, discus love hot, hate cold. So me personally, my ideal is anywhere from 82 to 86 degrees. And you actually can go to 88 to 90, but for me personally, in my tanks, I love 84. I stay at 84. That's perfect. That's all you got to do at 84 degrees, you should have no problem. Another advice. Depending on the size tank you got, you might want to have two heaters because you don't want to put strain on one heater, so you always have two heaters. Okay, let's talk about food. You already own biscuits, you should already know. This is a pretty picky. But me, as a seasoned biscuit hobbyist, I'm going to give you a few points. So let's start off with their favorite, beef heart. Yeah, yeah, if you don't own discus, you're probably looking at me like, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. I think this is the number one go-to food for discus. They love it. Beef heart. Did I say I, I own drink discus? Yes, I do. And I happen to make my own discus plan from Drake's discus. So, many you got different companies out there that, that makes beef heart, but it's just normal beef heart. But, hey, like I say, Drake's Distance, we make a beef heart blend. All right, set. Viber Bites. Discus love these also. To me personally, I think it's the color and I think the way it looks. It looks like a blood worm. So I think that what attracts what they like. Sad see. Brine shrimp. Frozen. Freeze dried. Me personally. I do freeze dry because it's easy, it sticks to the wall of the tank, and they just come and gobble it up. All right, one more. Well, I can't say one more because you got flakes, different type of flakes, different type of pellets, but I don't do flakes, I don't do pellets. So, blood worms, they love it too. But, stay away from feeding your discus blood worms daily. No nutrition value at all. I treat blood worms as a treat. I give it once, twice a week maybe. Like I say, stay away from feeding your discus blood worms daily. Because they also come with parasites. So my advice to you, if you do choose to feed your discus blood worms, Try to find a company that have clean and parasite-free blood worms. Okay, that was the foods. Now you might ask me about feeding. How do I feed? How much do I feed? And when I feed? All right, me, once again, like I say, I'm a season. This is hobbies. That's me. Antonio Drake, owner of Drake's Business. I'm going to order you some beef heart. Give me a call. Like that plug, huh? <laughs> I know you All right, back to the feed. What I do is, if anywhere from two inches to four inches, I do four to five times a day. Anything from four and a half inches on up, I do twice a day. You might ask, so you feed your distance four to five times a day? How do you do it? I'm going to tell you how I do it. In the morning, I feed them Drake's Discus. Once again, you want to order? Give me a call. You like that plug again? Yeah, I know you do. So, in the morning, I do beef heart. Lunch, I usually do a uh, vibrant bite, you know, some type of pellet, something like that. You know, a little midday snack, you know, I would, like I say, I might give them blood worms, but I only do blood worms, like I say, twice a week. That's the most, twice a week. So that'll be their midday stack, you know. So 
Then the third feet, the dinner. Um, I go with the brown shrimp. That's what I do. I go with the brown shrimp. They love it. You throw it in the tank and they eat it up. And for that last meal, I go with jerk biscuits, beef heart, once again. So that's beef heart twice a day. Breakfast, late dinner. Fried shrimp, lunch, or midday snack. Barber bites, lunch, or midnight snack. And you might be the type that want to feed your biscuits pellets or flakes. So you throw that in there. So four to five times a day. Now for the two feedings I do, you know, my larger discus, I only do Drake's dishes. I, they own beef heart. 24-7. That's all they eat. Now I will tell you, it might not be a good idea, and it might be a good idea. For me, it's a good idea because I own Drake's Discus and I have a limited supply of Drake's Discus beef heart. But someone that don't, I don't recommend you feed your fish the same thing every day because, like I say, if you already have discus, you will understand what I'm going to talk about. Once you get a discus hooked on one food, they hook. It takes a while, it's hard to get them off. So, mix it up. Like I say, I mix it up with my younger discus, my older discus, straight beef heart. Man, hey, you want bigger discus? You want better shaped discus? That roundness, you want growth rapidly? You want nice color? Drake's this. That's another plug. Now, give me a call. 601 402 5016. We'll get an order out to you next day. Thank you. Okay, let's talk living slash housing situation when it comes to distance. Distance love clean and pristine. Clean water, pristine water, your distance. They should be happy. They tank size. They say you want a 10 gallons to every fish. So that means you have six discus, you want a 60 gallon tank. You want 10 discus, 100 gallon tank or above. And yes, I said six. You don't want to go under six. You want to stay six or more. Because discus has this thing that they do called a pecking order. You're going to have someone that's more dominant, then you're going to have someone that's less dominant. And me, I watch my discus. And then you're going to have that one discus that's in the middle, that sells down everything, that actually tells the most dominant fish to sit your butt down. You don't run nothing in this house. That's how I look at it. You like that, right? I know you do. But, Come, come, come with me for a second. I want to show you something. This 100 gallon and 80 gallon tank. I like big tanks. Uh, so I don't I don't know if you want a big tank or you want a small tank. But if you go to go small, try not to go no smaller than 60 gallon. Filtration. Gotta have a little filtration. So as I said in the beginning of the video, for steam. Just remember that word, pristine. When you have discus, remember, pristine. So your filtration has to be up to par. You can get your FX4 or FX6 perfect for a discus. Another thing about the living situation, discus don't like a lot of water movement. So if you don't have discus and you want to buy discus and you put power heads and you put wave makers and all that in your tank, cut it out. Don't do it. This is hate fast moving water. Alright? Plants. They like plants. As you can see, my tank, I don't have any plants. Why? I did the plants, but now I don't want to do plants anymore. But you can do plants, a lot of plants. All right, 
Well, let's see, what else we want to talk about here when it comes to living situation? Water condition. Whenever you do a water change, you have to add water condition. You can use prime or you can use safe. Those two things are very important when it comes to the health of your dishes if you're using tap water. Prime, safe. Either one of those two and you should be good. pH. They say a good pH is what, seven down to six. But me, I, I use tap water, so my tap water comes out at eight. But that's fine. This just can adapt. Substrate or not substrate. It's up to you. I will tell you, when you have substrate, just say if you have rocks as a substrate. Bad idea. Don't do rocks. Because rocks, you have the food, the old food that gets inside in, in the rocks and it, it likes to hide under there and it comes, comes out like a thief in the night. A thief in the night. And it causes ammonia, it causes ammonia spikes, it's the bacteria. Just don't do rocks. If you want to do a good substrate, just try sand. Just, just you can actually go to Hobby Lobby. You can go to Lowe's. You can go to Home Depot. And me personally, I went there and I just bought the five dollar bag of playground sand. So be going to your local fish store and pay nineteen ninety nine bucks or fifteen ninety nine for what? Five pound bag of sand, go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, five bucks. It's that simple. Or you can do what's right, bare bottom. You want bare bottom. That's how you keep the distance healthy. It's so easy to clean. You don't have to get all in that sand and stir all of that bacteria up. You ain't got to stir all that ammonia up. All you do is, it's simple, it's easy. Bear bottom. As you can see, bear bottom. Fish happy, fish love. Water chemistry. Let's talk about that also. pH. The normal pH range for a discus, 7 to 6.5. Or, you know, if you're breeding, you can go lower. But that's a whole nother video. We'll talk about that later. Wild biscuits, that's a whole different ballpark. They like their pH to be seven or below. But we're not talking about wilds right now. We're talking about regular biscuits. All right. Uh, hardness. Biscuits love, they want a soft. All right. Me personally, I keep my, my water at a, a two or three degree hardness does just fine. But you have to be careful when you want your water to be that soft. You have to be careful with what they call pH crash. pH crash can kill your fish in an instant. So be careful about that pH crash. Remember that pH crash. All right, now I'm gonna say something that I know a lot of people gonna be mad at me about. But I'm gonna tell you the truth. I've been keeping discus for years. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you from my experience. So, like I say, it's gonna be some people that's mad, gonna be mad okay. at Okay, cut the music right here. I'm tired, 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 tired. Can I say tired again? Tired of you people that talks about water change. Water change, water change, water change, water change. Water change, water change, water change, water change. Water change, water change, water change. Stop it, please. You're making the discus hobby more complicated than it should be. You want the truth about water changes? 180 gallon tank. I do a water change once a week. 50 to 80%. Yeah, you heard that right. Once a week. Now, 
It's different. If you breathe, now that's where you want your water change, water change, water change. They do water change, but that's a whole nother video. I'll get to that later. But right now, people, stop making it complicated. It's not that complicated. All right? You're making a hobby hard. You make people say, I don't think I want to get into distance because they require a lot. This just don't require a lot. They, they require cleanness. They want cleanness. So if your filtration is right, you shouldn't have to do water changes every day. So like I said, water change once a week, depending on how many fish you have, twice a week at the most. No more than twice a week. So you don't have to do a water change Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I say, I do 50% water change on my tank once a week. All right? And, and like I say, said at the beginning, when you do water change, you got to have prime or you got to have safe. All right? Let's talk about medication. But before we actually get on a different type of medication, I want to stress something that's very important when it comes to that. Sometimes, you know, you look at your fish and you might say, hey, my fish look different, my fish look sick. What medications can I use? But I want to tell you something. Sometimes medications don't even need to be used with what's going on with your fish. Because actually, medications could be deadly to your fish. Just got to take the time out, learn your fish, know your fish, check and see why your fish looks sick. Sometimes, simple water change and upping the temperature can help. Try to find out what's causing your fish to be stressed. It could be a number of things, but just do that before you go add medications because like I said, adding medications can be more deadly to your fish than what's already going on with your fish. And eight out of 10 times, your fish just stressed because this is, is easily to get stressed. So your fish can just be stressed off the small little things. Like I say, maybe the water's, you know, a little dirty, you know, maybe the heat have dropped, you know. So just simple water change, simple check, you know, water parameters, you know, pH, your pH might drop a little bit and your fish don't like that. Um, your heat is turned off and your temperature went down a few degrees and your fish don't like that. Something about discus that I, I, I love so much, discus can tell you what's going on with them with snap of a finger, just by looking at them. I don't know any other fish in the hobby that, that does it. Um, let's see. I've owned arowanas in my life. Arowanas stay silky. When they stressed out, they still silky. So not many fish can actually tell you what's going on with, with just looking at them. You know, you got the fish. Just say you have your discus is black, full black. What's going on? Sometimes it's just stress. Sometimes your fish is just stressed out. And that's just part of the discus hobby. Your discus will get stressed, but I can't stress this enough. Take your time, figure out what's causing your fish to be stressed before you add meds. All right? Now, let's get to a couple meds I have here. You got, you know, your normal aquarium of salt. That's just something real simple. You got metrolidazole. You know, and, and right now I'm not I'm not gonna break down what the medicine does, nothing like that. That's a whole nother video. I'm just giving you some medicines that's you know is used in the hobby when it comes to this. You got polyguard, then you have polyguard. Don't get them mixed up. One of them I call polyguard. Polyguard, I call it the chemo of the medications. So don't get Polly and Perry mixed up together. See his medicine? Take it away. Piece of crap. It's just water to me, to be honest. 
this stress coat plus, throw it away. Piece of crap. Don't need it. Okay. Almost to the end, I do want to tell you guys about a couple of diseases that's that's known in the discus hopping, so you'll be aware. First, fin rot. Discus plague, and I like to call it discus AIDS. Velvet. Gill fluke. A late Merry Christmas, but internal parasites. Drops in Popeye! Alright, as we at the end of this video, I just want to say a few last things. I want to talk about something. People might say discus are hard to keep. Discus are difficult. Discus just die. Now that is true. One day your discus might be healthy, fine, eating, swimming, having fun, and the next day, it just died. That's kind of something that goes unanswered, and people in the discus hobby understand what I'm talking about. But, discus is not hard to keep people. It's just people that's, that mis misled makes it harder than it actually is. Keeping discus is sort of like keeping any other fish. It just takes time and it takes work and you can't be lazy. When it comes to discus, you can't be lazy. So, I love my discus. Come, come take a trip with me. I love my discus. I do everything for my discus. I know my discus. I can look at my discus and I can tell when something's wrong. No, no, why though? Because I took the time and I learned my discus. I took the time and I learned the hobby. So it's easy. Like I say, just like any hey, other fish, it's easy. I don't know if a lot of you know about this book. One of the best information you need. I want to read something right here. It says, Why is discus regarded as a problem fish? Why do so many believe that it's something only specialists, only specialists can keep? Why does discus have the reputation of being prone to disease? These are similar questions that are easily answered. The discus is a problem fish only because people say it is. So-called discus specialists have built up the myth of breeding difficult and problems keeping. Discus fall ill, only they're kept wrong. Please. Once again, discus fall ill only when they're kept wrong. The discus is tougher and may long live the most ordinary fish. So once again, this is not a hard hobby. This is not a hard fish. Your fish gets ill because it's kept wrong. Your fish get ill because you ain't take the time to check the fish. You didn't take the time to check your water. You ain't take the time to do water changes. You ain't check the time to feed your fish correctly. That's called being lazy. So as long as you're not lazy in this hobby, as the book says, discus can live long than any other pet. So before I let you guys go, this is Antonio Drake on the Drake's Discus. Two things I want to say to all my discus people, I love it for you to stick around. Get it? Around. <laughs> And one more thing, to all you discus haters, don't diss me, or don't diss us. Get it? Diss us? Let's see you the discus. Alright? Trace discus, and I'm out.